record. Amen. 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 Well, praise our God. Thank you again to everyone. That, and thank you for your patience um, for, you know, with us for Mentoring Mondays. Our message tonight was, and I'm trying to bring up the scripture. Uh, I'm going to ask them. Um, Thank you very much for that category. Oh, you muted yourself. Oh. No, she muted herself. Mm -hmm. um, she muted herself. The here. If everybody would do me a favor, the scripture we're going to talk. Oops, the scripture we're going to talk about today. Oh. Uh, we're actually okay, so we're not, we are going to talk from the scripture in Esther. I'm going to try to figure out where that noise is coming from. Coming from Michael Hopkins. My mind. Oh, it, it can't be me because I'm muted right now. You no, only think. Muted. You're not oh, muted because so we can hear you talking. <laughs> oh, no. Actually, I was crunching, but you only think you can hear me now, right? <laughs> you heard some noise in the background, like a TV or something coming from your end. <gasps> Couldn't have been my 55 inch, but uh, I'm oh, muted listen now. Listen to it. Listen to him. Listen to him. Going to talk about the, the 55 inch. Uh, All right. <laughs> All right. All right. So let's go to the book of Esther, if you don't mind, because the story we're going to talk about tonight, I said I was going to chat with the brothers. We're going to talk about Azararis. Have you said that name? And I'm going to make it easy for you and say Xerxes. Uh, one of the things that, that, that I wish I was able to send the flyer out about, because the, the name, when we read it in Esther, may not key to us who Azaharis was or is. Um, so let me pray right quick, and then we're going to go into to the message that God has about Xerxes' folly, okay? Father, in the name of Jesus, first of all, I thank you, Lord God, for bringing me to a safe place to be able to stop and be able to do this Zoom, and, and Lord, be able to go forth with the, the, the plan and the purpose that you have given me for Mentoring Mondays. Lord God, whether it's convenient or not convenient, we will always yield to what the Spirit of the Lord directs. So I thank you right now for bringing us to this place. Now I ask you to speak through me. You know my notes are at home, God, so it's going to be all you. And I give you praise for it now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. But Amen. That, you know, um, how many of you on the line have, have seen the movie uh, The 300? Anybody? I didn't see the whole thing. Okay. This is I did not see it. No? Okay. Not all of it. Mm -hmm. Well, those of you that have seen it, or if you do get a chance to go and see it, or watch it on Netflix or whatever, the key about that story is it's a fight between two kingdoms. The 300 were 300 Greeks that came against a powerful ally. And, uh, you know, their tenacity, their, their, um, uh, passion uh, and so forth. What I wanted to key in for you is that king that they came against, the one that claimed that he was a god, the one that that claimed he was all that and a bag of chips that they were fighting against, that king was King Azaharis. That king was Xerxes. So when we're going back into the book of Esther and we're talking about Xerxes, I'm going to talk to you about Xerxes' folly and the things that we as believers must be, be careful about and not allow it to, to fester in our walk. Amen. So Xerxes, let, if you look in the book of Esther, I'm going to read from a different version because I'm reading from my phone, okay? But it says in Esther chapter 1, this is a record of what happened during the reign of Azaharis, the Azaharis who ruled over 127 provinces from India to Kush. At that time, King Azaharis was ruling from Susa, the capital. Uh, 
In the third year of his reign, he gave a banquet for all of his officials and ministers and military leaders of Persia and Media. The nobles and the provincial officials were present and he displayed the enormous wealth of his kingdom along with his splendid beauty and greatness for many days, for 180 days in all. And when those days were over, the king held a seven day banquet in the courtyard of, his, of the garden of his palace for all the people who were present in Susa, the capital, from the greatest to the least important. The curtains were tied with blue linen, tied with cords of fine linen, purple material to silver rings of marble columns. There were couches of gold and silver on mosaic pavement of porphyry, marble, mother of pearl, and other precious stones. Drinks were served in gold vessels of various kinds, and there was plenty of raw wine because the king was generous. According to the king's decree, the drinking was not compulsory, but the king instructed every steward in his house to serve each individual what he desired. Queen Vashti also held a banquet in the royal palace of King Azarus for the women. A week later, when the king was under the influence of all that wine, he ordered Mehuman, Bizda, Harbona, Bigtha, Abigtha, Zethar, and Carcass, the seven eunuchs who served King Azarus, to bring king, Queen Vashti to the king, wearing the royal crown to display her beauty to the people and the officials, since she was lovely to look at. Queen Vashti refused to come at the king's orders that was brought by the eunuchs. The king flew into a rage. The king spoke to the wise men who understood the times, for it was the king's custom to consult all those who understood law and justice. His closest advisors were Karshina, Shethar, Admatha, Tarshish, Mears, Marcina, and Mumukan, the seven officials of Persia and Medea, and he had who had direct access to the king and who held the highest rank in the kingdom, the king inquired according to the law, what should be done to the queen Vashti because she did not obey the, king, the order of King Azaharis that was delivered by the eunuchs. And the Mumikan replied, excuse me, then Mumikan replied in the presence of the king and his officials, it is not the king alone whom Vashti has wronged, but rather all of the officials and all of the people who are in the provinces of King Azaharis. When the report about the queen goes out to all the women, it will cause them to despise their husbands. They'll say King Azaharis ordered Queen Vashti to come to be brought before him, but she didn't come. This very day, the wives of the officials of Persia and Medea will, who hear the report about the king will speak in the same way to all the officials of the king and there will be more than enough contempt and anger. If it seems good to the king, let a royal decree go out from him and let it be written in the laws of Persia and Medea, which cannot be repealed, that Vashti is never again to enter into the presence of the king of King Azaris. Let the king give her royal position to another woman who is better than she. When the edict of the king that he issues is heard throughout the kingdom, for it is vast, then all the women will honor, give honor to their husbands from the greatest to the least important. This seemed like a good idea to the king and his officials, so the king did what Mumikin suggested. He sent letters to all the provinces of the king written in the script of that province and to each people in their own language, ordering that every man should be the master in his house and speak the language of his own people. Okay, so I wanted to start off there that we're gonna talk about King Azahara's folly. First of all, as the reason I brought up the, the fact that he was the king that is portrayed in the movie, uh, the 300, one of the things, you know, that caused a whole lot of stir with the Iranians and the Persians. Why? Because Persia is the area that is now called Iran, in case those of you didn't, didn't realize that. However, at this time, this is around 600 years before Christ. It's after King David. Uh, it's after Solomon. Uh, it's after, you know, the kingdom of Israel has been split into the northern kingdom, the southern kingdom. The Assyrians conquered the northern kingdom. Uh, the Babylonians conquered the southern kingdom, the southern kingdom being Judah and Benjamin. And then just the two tribes, the 10 tribes were the Northern Kingdom. And then the two, Judah and Benjamin, were the Southern Kingdom. Ba uh, Assyria conquered uh, the Northern Kingdom. And um, Babylon conquered the Southern Kingdom. Okay. And, and then the 
the Persians, Medo-Persians, they came along and they conquered the Babylonians. So they then, because the, the uh, Jews had been exiled uh, into the Babylonian lands and when the Persians took over, they then, by King Darius, they said, you can go on back home if you want to. Well, only a few of them went home. A lot of them disobeyed. They stayed in the land of their, aid, their, of their enemy because it was more comfortable. I mean, think about it. They had built houses. They had been there for over 70 years. They had built houses. They had their businesses. They, they, you know, they were settled. And more stayed than went back home. Of course, if they went back home, then they would have to rebuild Jerusalem. They would have to rebuild the, you know, and we know the story of Ezra, Nehemiah, uh, Jerubbabel, all of it. Talk about all the ruins that had to be rebuilt uh, and the work that had to be done. And, you know, it's just they, they were just rather content to, you know, deal with what their flesh could enjoy and not put out themselves for that work. Amen. So these are the ones that are still in the area, in the region of Persia. These are ones that have been released, but chose to stay in the land of their enemy. Uh huh. So here you have this king now. This king, and Darius is the one that told him that they could go. Cyrus, uh, I'm sorry, was the first one. Um, and God talks about him even and prophesied about him 200, about 100 years, even before he came on the scene, that he would be in uh on god's side he would be a pagan king but he would do the will of god when it comes to god's people so a, a case in point therefore you is even though we may have a king that does not know the god that we serve god can still use him to bless his people amen hallelujah so don't get all discombobulated when we've got kings and priests and uh, kings and presidents and governors and and rulers or so forth that don't know who God is because God is yet able to turn the heart of kings. God is yet able to still cause them to speak things and put things in motion that will benefit his people, even though they don't realize what they're doing, amen. So Cyrus was uh, Darius's dad and Darius was the, uh, the dad of, of Xerxes, amen. So what, the reason I'm bringing you down that walk is so that you can see that, that they've been now hanging out in this area in the region that they had um, the opportunity to leave if they chose to. But Xerxes is this king now that, that is power hungry, you know, because now they, they beat the Babylonians and they took their lands, but the Greeks are starting to build up now. And they're, they're, they're you know, um, the, the father of, um, uh, Alexander the Great, um, I, I can't think of his name right now, but but he's coming up. And then Alexander the Great is coming up. The, the Greeks are starting to build up. They're becoming a world empire. They're becoming a power. And uh, Xerxes is thinking just like they beat the Babylonians. You know what? It's time to squelch the Greeks. Uh-huh. That's where your 300 comes in. Well, But before the first battle he went, he first called all this, this Esther chapter one, he had this big banquet. He called all of the nobles, the military leaders, all the princes, you read that in those first, uh, he's in the third year of his reign, you read that. He's got over 127 provinces. He reigns from Persia, from the area, region of Iran, all the way to India. I mean, he has a humongous territory and he's bringing all of the nobles in. Why? Because first of all, war costs money. He needed to get them on his bandwagon. He needed to get them on his side. But what happens when you don't bother to check out what the plan of God is before you make a move? Because he didn't check with God. Now, remember, he is a pagan king. Hallelujah. But so everything that he's doing is flowing in God's plan. But as a man, as a woman, of, as a believer of God, we need to not make a move to go against something before we check out with God whether or not that's what he intends for us to do. Amen. We'll see why that is in a minute. Because he's now he's had this pulled everybody together. He's been having this feast and it says 180 days. Have y'all caught that? That means for six months, he was feeding folk and showing out. Uh-huh. 
he was pulling out, it says they were drinking out of gold. They had all kinds of uh, precious stones around them. They were laying around on linen and purple and, and, and you know, they were doing all kinds, you know, he was just showing up and showing out, right? Uh, and he was telling folks, let, listen, let them eat, drink and be merry. Give them everything they want. Don't, whatever they want, let them have it. Don't, don't force them, but if they wanted to go ahead. And it says for six months, they were just partying. Uh-huh. And then after the six months, now he's trying to show off that, that he's the ruler, he's the king, he's the one, he's the ace, he's the number one man. And, and, and let, me, let me share a little something with you. He decides then to have a banquet behind this 180 days of partying. And in the banquet now, he has opened it up from just the nobles and the princes and the military leaders. He's now said, everybody that's in the capital, y'all can come party with us. So the commoner was there. The nobleman was there. Everybody is at the party because you know what? Free food, free drink. Yep, I'm in the place. You, that's where I used to be back in the day. I don't know about you, I, but there was no shame in my game. Hold on one second. There's an ambulance going by. Father, I pray whatever's going on, whoever's in the back of that ambulance, Lord God, for your favor, Lord, let your grace depend, descend upon them now. I pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. So anyway, uh, the, he, it's seven days. We read that, uh, you know, it's, it's seven days. Um, he decides to have this party, that, um, a seven-day banquet. You'll find that in verse five. And, it's, and he's invited everybody from the greatest to the least important. In other words, even the beggar can come and eat. Even the beggar can come and party. And you have to recognize the kind of party this is. You see, the only kind of women that would have been at that kind of party would have been the women that were the dancers or that were to service the men. You get what I'm saying, okay? So there was all kind of lasciviousness going on. There was drunkenness. There was hedonism. There was... Uh, um, uh, what is the word I'm looking for? Um, when you eat too much, anyway, where, where you, you just gluttony, yeah, that's what I'm looking for. So, gluttony, hedonism, lasciviousness, they were drunken, drunkards, they 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 were uh fornicating, they were doing, they were having themselves a grand old good time. And it says that this has been going on for seven days, and then it says after the week, he's so drunk that. He now tells his, his servants, go get the queen. I need to show her off, have her wear her royal um, crown and so people can see her beauty. Now, I need y'all to understand something. I told you the kind of women was at this party. I told you the kind of people that are at this party. I told you the kind of things that are happening at this party. And when you have to read between the lines, he was telling her to show up naked, show off her beauty, wearing nothing but her crown. She refused. Of course, I would refuse as well. What did he do? See, we have to be careful about allowing things to control us that will alter our state of mind. He's allowed the civics, he's allowed uh, uh, feasting and drinking and partying and, and to just throw away all kinds of restriction, to throw away all morality. And this is again, a lesson that we have to learn as believers when we, we are indulging to indulge in moderation. You heard what I said, because here's the thing. Some people want to say, and so there might be some that were going to get mad at me about this, but that's okay. You know, some people say, well, you know, I would never be at a party where they're selling, where they're serving drinks. Well, Jesus turned water to wine and he made it the best wine there was. So I will be at a party that, that maybe serves drinks or whatever for an occasion, but I will not be indulging in lasciviousness or drunkenness or a hedonism or gluttony or it, taking things. He said, do all things in moderation. Don't even eat too many chicken legs. Amen. Leave them wings alone. Amen. So here's the thing. When you open yourself up for to go overboard, to go beyond reason, to go beyond boundaries, then things will begin to transpire that you may not want to happen. This is what happened with, As uh, with King Azaharis, or his real name was Xerxes. Uh, let me explain the difference in that. Azaharis, excuse me, is the Persian name for him. Xerxes is the Greek name for him, okay? Just like 
Esther had the Persian name Esther, but her 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 uh, per, her Jewish name was Hadassah. So th the thing about it is, we you know we talk about the the um, the boys, the the um, the three Hebrew boys, you know, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Those were Babylonian names. Those were not their Jewish names. So recognize that in the word, sometimes you'll see a name, but it may be talking about another, the same person with a different name. So Xerxes and Azaharis are the same person, okay? So here's the thing. He has now embarrassed his queen, right? And because she is not caught up in all that drunkenness and lasciviousness and such, she stands on her moral code and will not come. So now he has got, he's got a saved face. What does he do? He's mad. He's drunk. So he's definitely, his, his, his um, emotions are not in check. But then he goes and asks for advice from someone who is just as out of order as he is. Did I say that? Yes, I did. We have to be careful about going, even though they had position for him, it says that they were, yeah, that, that was the normal thing to go and get their counsel, uh, that that was their normal thing. I need to turn up, let a window down. I'm getting a little hot in here. Praise the Lord. But that was their thing to, you know, they were the advisors to the king. But the problem was right now they've been hanging out in the same party, doing the same thing. They, they're not in any place to, to advise anybody, but he listens to what they tell him. And because he wants to save face, he basically does what they suggest because they're worried about um, the repercussions of this woman, this, 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 uh, 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 not following the king's orders and then it's spreading to their wives, but not understanding that most wives would have understood why she said no. I mean, come on, somebody. What Most of us would understand that I'm not going to show up with nothing but a crown on my head in front of a, the entire city. Remember it said from the greatest to the least and they're drunk and they're crazy and they've been, you know, doing all kinds of things. I'm not going to expose myself to that. And every, I do believe every other wife would have understood that. It wasn't a matter of her being disrespectful to a king. It was a matter of respecting herself. Amen. But this is not about Vashti. This is about Azaharis. So here's the thing. He is not thinking straight. And so he seeks counsel, but he seeks counsel from the wrong person at the wrong time. Okay. We have to be careful. Uh, Psalm 1 says, uh, walk not, um, blessed is a man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, for his delight should be in the law of the Lord, and in his law meditate day and night. That needs to be our standpoint as believers. Amen. So here's the thing. Azaharis now has been told, uh, you make an edict that she'll never come before you again. Basically, you know, strip her of her kingdom, strip her of her royalty and replace her. Okay. Just like chattel. She displeased you, get rid of her. And he follows that. But notice it says that once a rule has been made, the rule, once the law has been made, the law can't be changed. Amen. So the whole point of this party that Azahiris was started out doing was in order to show forth his strength, his wealth, and his ability as a king so that they could go to war against mm -hmm. the Greeks. Mm -hmm. And instead, what he has done is shown his lack of, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? His, his lack of, of um, excuse me, let that car go by. <laughs> that yeah that was a corvette with no without a, a muffler okay but his lack of wisdom right um his lack of understanding and his lack you know his lack of character he's showing himself to be very narcissistic he's showing himself to be very egotistical he's showing himself to be um you know a people pleasing needing needing the admiration we talk in in um our Sunday services, we've been talking about the different nations and the character, the character that those nations would represent that were in the um, promised land. And one of those spirits was the Amorite spirit, which was a fame seeker, the one that wanted to manipulate and control and to be seen and, 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 and to be, a, you know, be the, the, the 
the light of the party, everything, you know, the E.F. Hutton, when E.F. Hutton speaks, everybody listens, right? And that spirit is what uh, Xerxes is operating in. It's all about him. He saw, and you will see it even if you watch the movie 300. Now, of course, that's a fictional, um, they took some liberties as a fictional base, but there is the legend that Xerxes actually attempted to declare himself to be a god. That's how well, way beyond himself he could get, amen? So anyway, we notice here that after King ba Queen Vashti has been dis dispatched, amen, then, uh, you know, he realizes that he's made a mistake after he, you know, gets his mind back and he's kind of sobered up a bit, but he can't change anything now. So now he's dealing with, and that's going into chapter two. So now, you know, they're, they're seeing that they need to, to um, replace the queen. And they, uh, of course, they go out and they find all the hand, the pretty handmaids of the, of the, the uh, region and you remember that this is over 127 provinces so from going from from um basically saudi arabia all the way across to india amen so a uh, huge province that these women are being paraded around in front of him uh and and basically he would sleep with them one night and if they pleased him uh didn't please him they went into one harem where uh, you know, because once once he had been with them, nobody else could be with them. Okay, so their lives were completely um, interrupted once they were taken in for the king's inspection. Mm -hmm. And they were either put in the harem where he would visit or the harem where he wouldn't, but they'd never go back home uh, again. He wants to be in control, control of people, showing his narcissistic uh, attitude. Uh huh. So anyway, the reason I wanted to bring up King Azahiris and Xerxes, uh, by the way, later on, he does go to war. He does talk them into going to war with him and they go to war against the Greeks. But guess what? He loses the battle, right? He loses the battle and he comes back home. So the, the story of Esther that's happening with Esther and Haman and, and all of that uh, that's going on in that time frame. This is after he has lost the battle with Greece. So he is now again trying to um, reestablish himself with some kind of uh, notoriety or some kind of um, uh, um, what is what I'm looking for um, clout. Okay. Um, as he's going, you know, so when Haman comes to him and comes to him with this, oh, listen, you've got some folks that are in your kingdom that are trying to undermine your kingdom, da, 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 talking about the Jews, because we know that Haman had an ulterior motive that he hated the Jews because he was part of the, the um, family of the tribe, uh, the, re the, the kingdom, the nation, I'm sorry, that Saul was supposed to have wiped out, but Saul did not wipe them all out. And that's what got, he got in trouble with God about because he didn't follow God's uh, command of, to completely wipe them out. So Haman was of that lineage and he wanted vengeance against the Jews, okay? So anyway, here we have Haman now whispering innuendos and, and secrets of treachery and so forth. And uh, Xerxes is again, listening to unwise counsel because he, he's a man that wants, he wants to control, he wants to manipulate, but he's easily manipulated. We as believers must be careful that we are not easily manipulated by those we think are in our corner, amen? This is a story that I wanted you to hear in about King uh, Azahiris is, or Xerxes is the fact that we must be as believers very careful whose counsel we're listening to and the decisions that we make and the environment and the way and uh, that we make those decisions. Recognize when, for instance, um, earlier, yet earlier on Saturday, uh, I was very, very upset um, with, with a business situation. And I, I knew that I could not make a decision because I was upset. You know, that I was in an environment in which or situation in which my emotions were aflamed, okay? I'm gonna be nice about it. My emotions were aflamed. So I knew I could not make any major decisions while I was in that state. We as believers need to recognize that. Be it that we're partying too much 
or be it that we're angry, be it that we're sad or we're overjoyed. Whenever our emotions are at a peak, we need to be careful about who we're listening to and the decisions that we make. I, I wanted to tell you a little bit more about King Azaharis, but I, I believe that that's about where God wants me to drop it, um, that that was the message uh, about that I got out of the very first part of, 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 of Esther. Um, we may talk a little bit about her later, but for now, I needed you to hear from um, the brothers and the sisters need to recognize again, the lesson to learn from King Azaharis or King Xerxes, be careful who you listen to. Be careful of the decisions that you make, when you make them, how you make them because they can not only affect you, they can affect kingdoms, amen. And we're all about the kingdom, right? Amen, amen. So I hope you got a little some some out of that, amen. Uh, there's, there's, as I said, there's even more uh, to the story. Watch the movie 300 is really excellent. I love it. And again, they, they kind of went a little overboard, but the story of the 300 coming against Xerxes and, and the fact that they may have lost that, but Xerxes eventually lost against the Greeks and the Greeks came into power under Alexander the Great uh, and Ptolemy, a man, and basically took over the world. And through them though, through the Greeks is where we have our New Testament, our, our, our letters and so forth and so on, that we are able to get the, the, the um, what is the word, the manuscripts were done through the, under the Grecian empire. What was that important? I'm gonna just drop this one nugget for you. Why was it important for uh, the Greeks and the Romans to be in power for, for um, the the um, advent of the uh, believers. Have you ever thought about the fact that, like I said, the Babylonians, the Assyrians, the Medes, the Persians, they were content to rule, but they were stationary. However, the Greeks and the Romans, they were not. They were always going after more territory, always furthering, always expanding their boundaries, always going further, even though they were after, you know, they had their, their pagan rituals, their pagan rules and their pagan reasons of doing things. God used that because all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord and are the called according to his purpose, because they were not stationary because they were expanding territory. Then as the gospel was going out, it could go, it would expand, it would go to more regions, amen. It was not being um, centralized, even as, like I said, the Jews that didn't want to leave the, the, the Persian empire that, that settled in, uh, right? But by the gospel coming forth during the time of the Roman and the Greek uh, empire, guess what? It expanded and it crossed globes, it crossed the waters, amen, and we, now have the full story of how God's glory is manifest through his people. Amen. So that's my message for today from the folly of King um, Xerxes. Xerxes folly is what I call it. And uh, again, his name is King Azaharis, same name, same person. I will open the floor up now for anybody that has anything to like say, questions or what have you. Um, the floor is open. Did I lose everybody? Good after, Good evening. Good evening. This is Dorothy. Hey, this is Dorothy. I'll just like to let you know, Dr. Carey, that... Uh, a lot of times I just sit back and listen and, and absorb the words of God that's come from you. And sometimes I may come, most of the times I don't because I just, just let it all soak in. <laughs> but I want to say to you that uh, you definitely have the word of God inside of you. You have a gift of teaching. That's your gift. 
Praise God. And I received everything that you said this evening. I want you to know you just continue and bring that word forth. The way you do, boldness is so bold. I just praise God for you and I will continue to pray for you and your mm -hmm. and after uh we're done uh I think that we on once is on the call we should do a prayer pray on your trip that you're gonna have. Amen. Thank you. You're welcome. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. That warms my heart. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Because as I said, you know, my, my all my notes are at the house. So there may be some other things that got that way in my notes that you didn't get, but praise God, I believe, I truly believe, I trust the spirit of the Lord enough to know that he said what he needed to say. Amen. I agree. Amen. Amen. You say you leave tomorrow for tonight at 3 a.m., right? Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Okay. That's what I thought. Hold on. So yes. just to piggyback off of what um what Dorothy said, as far as you know, how you always bring the word, you bring it with such clarity. And I've never actually heard that story before. So that was my first time hearing that. And I really enjoyed it. So when you have part two, I'll be ready. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And I agree. We should all pray for you for your trip before you leave uh, tonight so you have a safe journey. Amen. Praise God. Yes, and be in prayer for me because I have to teach class tomorrow evening. So I'm going to be doing that for uh -oh. another Zoom by phone. <laughs> <laughs> You're a bad girl. <laughs> now, listen i can't let stuff get in the way of what god has put in front of me to do so oh, amen. Oh, right that's right that's why we got to learn this technology so we can learn how to record even if we're not on a laptop or a computer mm -hmm. right <laughs> learn how to maneuver through, through the things you know know, where, know exactly where the buttons are and stuff like that you know because <laughs> yeah this is the first time i've done a zoom with like this one because you know even when i did the other zoom before from my car i had my laptop i had my little portable laptop this first oh. time i've used the phone oh, and wow. i'm like okay, okay well we're gonna do this praise god <laughs> right yeah it's not too Amen. bad yeah. i know michael got something to say he can't be over there being all quiet fly on the wall <laughs> <laughs> Well, I just want to say, I'm back again, Nur. I think anyone that has anything to say, I think we should go head on and not Russian people, but I know she has, uh, she has to go out of town and mm -hmm. I don't want to delay her time. So if anyone have anything to say, this mother and nurture is coming out of me now as a mama okay. there. <laughs> <laughs> no matter how old a person is, they say I will always be the mom in the group. But I think we should go head on and, and let her mm -hmm. know what we have to say so she can go get herself prepared and just mm. get some rest. Amen. Yeah. Amen. 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 Well, I appreciate everyone. I, I saw um, another fr minister friend of mine that was on for a moment. I see that he he's dropped off, but um, I would ask that you be in prayer also for um, Apostle Ramon Magia. He um, pressed his way to have service on yesterday, even though he was feeling very, very um, sick in his body, but he still pressed his way to, to do what God gave for him to do. So just, just like with me, you know, he doesn't let anything get in the way of what God calls him to do. So if you would just, you know, um, keep him in prayer for whatever, I don't know what the deal, what the issue was. He doesn't have to tell us that you know, but just be in prayer for his healing. Amen. 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 Amen.
So, Father, I thank you right now in the name of Jesus for the word that went forth. I pray, God, that there was a message that was received into the hearts of the hearer. Lord God, let that seed take root and grow. Lord God, let us be aware. Let us be, walk as Psalm 1, uh, that we recognize that we cannot walk in the counsel of the ungodly. And people are, can move into the space of being ungodly when they are caught up in fleshly behaviors and fleshly uh, influences. So help us, oh Lord, to walk circumspectly before men and that we seek your counsel, Lord God, and always walk in, um, in accordance with your will and your plan and your purpose for our lives. And it's in Jesus' name that I pray, amen. Okay, Amen. we're going to have prayer for you. Um, Nurja, yes. anybody want to pray? Me? I don't mind praying. No, go ahead. Go ahead, Dorothy. Okay. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for this evening. I thank you for the word that was brought forth uh, by Dr. Carey, Father God. Lord, she's always willing to do what she has been called to do. Father God, as she travels um, with her friend, uh, it was from the bottom of her heart, the love that she had for this individual to take her to her destination and also bring her back safely, Father God. Yes. And, as, and also as Dr. Carey uh, visit with her family in that area, Father, I pray that all is well with that. Mm -hmm. And also, Father God, the apostle that she mentioned uh, we just pray healing on his body right now in the yes. name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. And pray that every person that's on the sound of my voice, Father God, we just thank you, Lord. We just thank you for how you brought us all together. It was the enemy meant it for bad, but, but God. But he God. brought us together. It was a but God. I thank you, Lord, for uh, for what what came about because you have given me new friends and new daughters and just new relationship, new brothers. And I praise you for it, Lord. And they genuine. I praise you in the name of Jesus. And just watch over the car and everything else that's pertaining to this trip. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Carey, I'm so sorry. You know, I always try to speak. I had a call to come in in the middle of the lesson that I had to take. And I thank, <laughs> yeah, but I thank God for the part that I heard. I'm going to catch the replay. Did you record? Did you record? Yeah, I hit record. I got to figure out where it went to, but it's recording. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, but all of the history and all of the, the setting it up and taking us, walking us through the Bible, I thank you so much for all of that. And I just thank God for the gift. Once again, you are in the body of Christ. I always want to just, when it, when it's an opportunity, just, I just want to take advantage of it. So I thank you so much for the time and your willingness as a sister, um, Dorothy Pray, your willingness to still do what you're gifted and called to do. And it's timely, it's relevant, and I appreciate you so much. I love all of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, mm -hmm. guys. Got my heart. Is okay, my heart flipping like y'all did it last. I cut it out. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Amen. I appreciate all of you and I love you all. Brother Michael, Sister Dorothy, Sister Kita, Sister Nurjahan. Uh, I believe Sister Sharon just dropped, dropped on mm -hmm. with us. Uh, Sister Sherry. Sherry. Thank mm -hmm. you. Is it Sherry or Cherie? I wanted, I don't know if I'm Sherry. saying her name right. Sherry. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Because see, Sherry spells, Miss Sherry, you spell your name the same way I named my my daughter's middle name. It's okay. spelled the same way, but it's Cherie for her. Okay. So that's why I, I always have to <laughs> think about it before I say your name. <laughs> It doesn't matter. Either one I answer to. So, <laughs> okay. but it is Sherry. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, you guys have really blessed me for being on this evening, staying with me, even uh, though I kind of had to do this from, 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 um, you know, just by the spirit because I um, didn't have all my notes and what have you, but praise God. I think God said what he wanted to say and I'm just happy. Amen. Amen. I'll figure out where the recording is 
and I'll figure out how to get it uh, to the group and everything, but I don't think it will be done tonight. Okay. I think it went to the cloud. Yeah, I think it went to the cloud. Okay. So yeah, you can get I, like I, an email um, once it's ready. Once it's ready. Okay. Mm -hmm. And if, if they send me a link for it, I'll just sit, put the link over there and, and, and that'd be cool. But if it's going to require me doing any work with it, I won't get that done tonight because I've got to pack and get myself mm -hmm. some sleep. So yeah, but that's fine. Love you guys. Thank you so much. Thank You're you welcome. Too. All right. Peace. Thank you. Bye-bye bye -bye. now. Bye -bye, okay, guys. now I got to figure bye -bye. out how to, how to end it. Amen. <laughs> I love Just this. go to stop record. Uh oh. Uh, go back to more. I think my phone just died. No, we're still here. Did it? Yeah, we're still here. You're still recording too. Ready. Still there, Dr. Carey. And that's interesting. She said her phone died. Yeah, and we're still connected. Yeah, I don't know how that worked. Okay, maybe because I'm co-host. Hold on. Let me let me see if I can stop the record. Let me see. Maybe that's what's going on. Hold on. That's weird. Yep, okay. It's recording, so I'm going to go ahead and stop it. Hold on. You will receive an email notification when the cloud recording is ready.